it doesn't. Hold on to your butts. Don't waste my motherfucking time! I got up this morning. Put on my shoes. Tie my shoes. Went to the mirror. Put a comb in my hair. I made a move. Oh, what to do? Are we waiting? Where's Matt? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, you can't hear Matt. I hear him. Can you hear me? I don't think we can hear him. No, we can't oh. hear you at all. Starting off with great technical difficulties. Guys, we're the Lotus Cast. TheLotusCast.com well, I wonder where Matt went. I can't hear him. Uh, follow us on the Twitters at the Lotus Cast. Guys, welcome back to another fascinating Thursday night. We have a very special guest at 9.30. Youth in Revolt will be joining us in studio. Live in studio, right, Joe? Are they there? They're, yeah, they're right here. They're in studio? Yeah. The only person who's not here is you. That's, I like this. That's what? Can we do something with this music? Like, just turn it off completely? Why? Because when I don't talk... It gets really loud. The music is really loud? For you? Yeah, it gets like a blaring crazy loud. Oh, you're the same volume to us. So there's a lot to get to, and Youth and Revolt will be joining us soon. Uh, I can't wait to talk to them. We're going to be talking to Tanner, the lead singer. Um, But a lot to get to, a lot to talk about. Uh, Last week was just Adam and I, and Joe wasn't here. He was in Iceland. I'd like to talk about his trip. I'd like to talk about the Grammys for a little bit. There's some stuff there. Uh, Metallica's on tour. I'd like to talk about the tour. Lots, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to get to. Uh, so welcome back, Joe. How was, uh, how was your trip to Iceland, buddy? It was um, much nicer than here, from what I gathered. We left on a snowstorm, and we came back on a so- snowstorm. Yeah. There was so much snow, and, and last night... Where I live, we got another fucking like foot of snow, <laughs> and there's so much fucking snow on the ground, and it's miserable. I hate all this fucking snow. I, I can't stand it. Yeah, I'm sure it was a blast for you guys. Uh, we left. There was a blizzard in Massachusetts, and they didn't cancel our flight. They canceled yeah. almost everything at Logan, um, but like our flight was at uh, like six at night, and we decided, well, we'll try to we'll try to leave around one. And see if we can get there. And then Brian's uh, dad was kind enough to brave the blizzard and <laughs> drive us into Boston. And it took like an hour and a half, but we got there and uh, waited for them to, uh, we assumed would cancel, which would have been a great uh, cherry to the fact that our trip has been so plagued <laughs> so far. Yeah. Did you guys have a lot of problems? It seemed like uh, I, I kept hearing about cancellations on tours and stuff like that uh, yeah i mean overall did was it a fun trip yeah i mean the trip wasn't uh wasn't bad it's it, we did get canceled a lot on tours for um the northern lights because you can only see the northern lights when it's not cloudy out and it rained every single day we were there so oh, that sucks yeah um so they canceled it every every night we had it scheduled like we got there friday and friday through sunday they they all canceled so we we ended up getting a refund for it but um the other trips, the the other tours were just um, ridiculous. Like so Iceland I, is a... I thought it was funny. Uh, Adam and I were talking last week, and we brought up the fact that this is your your second vacation with Shannon in a different relationship. Yeah. yeah how was. how was how was this one? And uh, did you have a threesome? No, there was no threesome. There was. Um, did you even try? <laughs> no, I didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me Why ask would this. that be an option? I don't know. You're worthless, Joe. If, if they had got drunk enough and it was like at one point they just kind of like 
get naked, start getting undressed. And it's like, Joe, come on, join us. If there was the option for the threesome, would you have stepped up to the plate? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, no. I mean, everyone's it, drunk, having a good. Maybe say you're all in the jacuzzi. There's no jacuzzi. Let's pretend there is. <laughs> okay, we went to a jacuzzi, and they start getting naked and getting, uh, you know, getting cuddly, and and it's just the three of us in this jacuzzi. But they say, Joe, yeah, like they, Joe, why don't we you went come to a over? public jacuzzi, and it's the three of us in there. They they make a Joe sandwich like Shannon's on one side, and she like takes her top off and her titties are out and she presses them up against you and then Brian's on the other side and he's just kind of he's half chubbed and he's kind of pushing that against you. What uh like do you how do you, how do you play that? I to be honest I don't I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a weird scenario that I don't. Do you return the nipple press? Like do you start trying to dock nipples? In this scenario, I guess my shirt's off. Say so she's jerking him off, and Brian just grabs <laughs> your hand and puts it on her boob. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and he grabs your other hand, and he puts it on his testicles. <laughs> this is kind of a, do you, a wild threesome here. Do you get into it? I don't think so. <sighs> Joe. Do you remove, which hand do you take away first, the one that's on the boob or the one that's on the testicle? I don't know. It's probably hot in there, so... Um, the one that's underwater. Really... The one that's underwater, yeah. Joe, why do you have all these hang-ups? Why can't no you hang-ups. Just... I just don't, don't want to have a threesome with you my You can't friends. just enjoy a sexual encounter? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to have a threesome what with What if my it's, it's not even awkward afterward? You're all just still friends the next morning. It's like, yeah, that was fun last night, so uh, let's head on on the tour today. I don't know. I feel like that's a Cinemax movie. One that I'm that's not That's real in. life, Joe. That's not, that's not real life. <laughs> It, it could be a Cinemax movie. Uh, I don't know. It was odd. I didn't really want to. I mean, I love Shannon and Brian, but like, I didn't really want to be the third wheel on the trip. Uh, it just kind of ended up working out that way. We we're going in a larger group, and um, did you hear them doing the nasty? No, our rooms were far enough apart. And well, that's good. Um, you didn't even like put your ear up to their door. No. My my room, well, um, like it's the, the whole kitchen and living room, like the big room, was separating our two rooms, and then my my bed was up against the window, and all you heard was the street noises from from Reykjavik. What if what if you were in your room and they were in their room, and then all of a sudden, bloop, little notification. You pick up your cell phone, you look at it, and it's a picture. It's got uh, Shannon, and she's got a strap on on, and she's drilling Brian right, <laughs> and. It says, "Come join us for a sucking." For a suck it? <laughs> no, for a sucking. Oh, I was gonna say. Uh, would you? Would you cross the? Would you cross the suite? No, I, a I, No, I don't want to have a threesome with my friends. Yeah, why not? But they they said, "Come join us for a sucking." Yeah, even the phrasing. It's less likely for me to go over there. <laughs> Your friends are the it's best not... best people to have threesomes with. Why? Because you know. Because they're. Yeah, you know him. I see. This is what I'm afraid of. If if this were to happen, I'm losing friends at an alarming rate. And <laughs> <laughs> if for some reason they decide that it was too awkward and that they don't yeah. want to see me anymore, then that's like two people I but cross off the list. You know. Now, now, Joe. What if they feel weird that they sent the invite and then you didn't join them? Now they're offended. I can no. I can politely decline. It's like if. If somebody invites you to like a dinner and you said, "Oh, I'm busy tonight. I can't make it." You can decline yeah, that. Yeah, but this is this is kind of like it's implied because you're on a vacation with them. you like it's Yeah, them but I'm not you. sharing a bedroom with them. Uh, I have my you're own room. You're there strictly for uh, sexual relief. Like that's you know how you have the, you know, you got your token black friend, you've got the guy who's there for comedic relief. I you wish were I had there. A token black friend. <laughs> you were there. To uh, you know, to get a sucking. All right. How about what if you, you're just sitting in the common area on the couch, yeah. and <laughs> they just walk out. They're just wearing <laughs> bathrobes with nothing else, and they're open. When you can see everything, do you look? Do you enjoy? Oh, it? I'm, I'm gonna look, of course. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get up and try to join in on it, but I'm gonna look. Obviously, they walked into the living room with open bathrobes. That's on them. That's not on me. So you'll at least right. enjoy the view. Sure. Okay. Okay, what what do you do 
if you're sitting in the common area and they come out, like Adam said, in their open robes, Brian is fully erect and he comes and he stands right next to you and just starts jerking off. Do you walk out of the room? Uh, well, I'm not going to sit there. Is he doing it right in front of me or is he doing it yeah, on the other side Shannon, of the room? Yeah, and Shannon, like... Oh, they're just lays... putting on a show for me? Yeah, well, no, no. He's jerking off right next to you. Then Shannon comes and sits on the couch next to you, spreads her legs and starts finger blasting herself. No. I'm not, I'm you... not, I'm not joining into do? that. Do you, I, okay, I get you don't join yeah. in, but what do you, did you remove yourself? Do you get up and like, I'm well, sorry, Well, I'm guys. sure I'll make some sort of awkward comment because that's usually what I end up doing. And then I'll, I'll slowly excuse myself, like walking backwards <laughs> out of the room. So what if <laughs> you slide out? out? Yeah, slide, slide out. Slide out there. awkwardly. Just moonwalk out of there. You wouldn't even like, so she's going at herself, he's going at himself. You wouldn't be like, all right, I'll go at myself. No. Like I said before, they just... I don't want to have a threesome with my friends. Okay, what if they don't want a threesome, but you all just jerk off together? No, I still don't want to do that. Uh, why? I'm just I'm not interested in it. Well, that's fine. So okay, so uh, <laughs> you didn't you didn't have a threesome? No, and you guys didn't jerk off together, and you didn't knead on Shannon's bean. Um, what uh, what did you do? Like what what memories did you did you take away from? Uh, uh, well, it's a lot of tourists, and the, on, honestly, I don't think we really met any native Icelanders because there are so many tourists. Um, there, like, we kept running into the same people over and over, which is so odd because there was tons of people. But we went on a tour the first day of the southern coast, and uh, we met this group of people that got a group on, and there's 26 of them. And then the next What's day, funny we just keep running into them. A, a friend of a two friends of ours of of mine i guess from virginia uh they like they left and then you guys were going and it it, it looked like the same group on yeah I, I think we missed out there was like a group on um a month or two before we booked this and we missed it um but evidently a lot of people got it and went this weekend because it was it was a madhouse like if you we went to a couple of like the touristy like nat, uh national parks and there'd be like, you know, 20 to 30 tour buses, all full of people, and then tons of cars. And there was lines getting up to the edge of a cliff. Like, it was ridiculous. Did you bring any of the hundred uh, condoms that you purchased before <laughs> going to Ireland? Uh, yes. Those made the trip. You did? Well. Yeah. So you, so you brought condoms. I brought them in... in because I had my own room. You brought them in anticipation of something happening. No, but like you weren't going to let anything. I knew happen. it was going to be probably a zero percent chance, but I brought them as a just in case. I um, like that. Was there a case? There's no case. Oh. Did you even talk to any girls? Yeah, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There, were, there were other people there. Um, we went to the bars every night. So Did you talk to any guys. Yeah, Brian. <laughs> we honestly just we end up getting a table a lot. Uh, well, we went to an English pub one night, and um, because most of the the pubs there, like they're all like American or Irish or English, because I guess tourists just want to see where they're from when they go to foreign places. I don't know. It's just really dumb. It's, it is. It's funny to me. Like I, I was, you know, I'm following you guys on Snapchat. And one of the nights you're at a, an American themed bar. Yeah, well, we wanted to see because there's, there's nothing to do, so we're, we're bar hopping. We went to an Irish pub, and it was so packed, so we decided to go to the next one, which was an American pub. We're like, let's see how they think Americans are, and it was the most bizarre club. Like it didn't, it wasn't anything like an American. Um, I don't know, maybe it is a. a what was it like? It was you go in, it's like neon signs everywhere, like neon, blue and red. Like, the, the counter of the bar was just glowing blue and red. Um, Sounds like a Kmart in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a DJ just playing, like, tons of, like, like EDM music. Uh, and everybody inside was wearing suits, like, three-piece suits with a vest. All right, that's definitely not American. Yeah, it was so bizarre. <laughs> um, and then we left and went to the English pub next door. And it was like we went to the BBC in Franklin. Like, it was literally... <laughs> <laughs> they had a guy playing a guitar that was just doing, you know, like, all 90s tunes. It would be really funny. Yeah. He just walks in and he finds, like, Tom Larney. From, yeah, okay. that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> but that place was packed too. Like, but at least it was a nicer like venue than than the American club, which was not American at all. But they had signs everywhere that was just like, you know, flags and and patriots. So, 
What was, was really the uh, what, what was the best thing that you did? Like you, one one of the things that I saw. How cool was the glacier? Did you actually go on a glacier? No. The dumb thing about the glacier, we were supposed to. Um, we we didn't find this out to the next day because it was the first day we went there. We, we saw the glacier. Um, but our tour bus uh, took us there, and the thing with tour buses is it, there's so many people on the bus. They have to wait for everybody at each stop before they can move on to the next one. Yeah, and we didn't see the glacier tour t- till towards the end of the day. But like, people were so late getting back onto the bus that we had to like it just delayed everything. So by the time we got to the glacier, we only had forty minutes, and it was a fifteen minute walk to get to the glacier. So you get there, and like all we could go is to the top of the hill, take a couple photos, and walk back to make it to the bus to the bus uh, on time. I would love. Adam, I would love more than anything to, to be on a glacier. Like, tell, take a helicopter out to a glacier and just hang out yeah. on a glacier. You for could a have while. taken a tour where you hiked the entire glacier. Like, it was like there were so many people there in hiking gear with like those yeah, little, no, like the picks. I don't and want stuff. that. I don't, I don't want to hike the glacier. I want a helicopter to take Fly me to a it. glacier. No, no, to drop me off on the glacier. I want to hang out there on the glacier for like a few minutes in one spot. And then I want the helicopter to come back and, like, okay. That was your glacier time, and then go back. I, and I want to take a, like drink a little glacier uh, water. Yeah, it kind of sucked. And like hiking there, but... spill some oil and light it on fire, and say you're contributing to melting the ice caps. <laughs> yeah, douse it. Guess <laughs> Brian was so upset about the melting the uh, the glacier thing because um, people would go up to the tour guide and he'd said like the glacier was melting and stuff. And Brian was like, yes, from natural causes, not from man-made <laughs> thing. And he was so pissed. He wanted to tell people that, yes, the it's because the glaciers were receding from 10,000 years ago. It wasn't because of man-made climate change. That's awesome. I bet he had fun doing that. <laughs> he was serious that about was it. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, like, what was the average price of things? Was it decent prices there or no, was it expensive? It's expensive? Everything was expensive. Yeah. Um, Everything's in like Icelandic um, kroner is what they call it, uh, and it's. Um, I mean, the coronas there. What is it? It's called yeah, kroner. It's what J- J- fucking uh, Jordan has. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to pay in <laughs> it's, Crohn's disease. It's pay, you have to pay Crohn's disease uh, when you get there, and everything. Right, it's time like, to pay for your meal, and you just shit right there on the seat. Like we had to pay. Uh, one of our dinners was like a hundred and uh, uh, sorry, fifteen thousand. Um, uh, kroner and that's really about 140 bucks uh which stings because like it's just literally like you had burgers and fries and a couple beers and it was 150 bucks and we actually avoided some of the nicer places just because it was going to be over 100 dollars a person just to eat dinner um and every every shop there is just geared towards tourists so like if you want to buy an icelandic wool sweater it was 200 dollars. it was it's well, just expensive what was your favorite memory from your trip um, I mean, I guess we ate a lot of cool stuff. I ate reindeer. Oh, yeah. So, I saw that you ate whale fin. Yeah. Uh, Shannon ordered like a whale steak and I got a reindeer burger and uh, Brian got some sort of lamb uh, dish like the, the first night we were there. How, how was the whale fin? Uh, it was tasty. Um, not as good as a whale burger. That was amazing. Or, or sorry, the reindeer whale burger. burger? Reindeer burger. Oh, reindeer burger. That yeah. was yeah. It was that was amazing. I would go back and get. Reindeer what was burger on the reindeer burger? Um, some sort of uh, raspberry aioli and uh, yeah. Was it was, was it, it the really actual? Tasty. What was the meat really flavorful? Like the meat was good, or was it what was on the burger that made it? Taste no, the good? meat was very. It was super flavorful, and it's not yeah. like it tastes like beef or anything like that. But like just combined with everything on the burger, it was it was like probably the so, best meal I had there. Like. Totally new, something. Yeah, and we didn't get a chance to try. They had horse, but it was too expensive. Um, and they had uh, a puffin, but we we didn't get a chance to do that because all the places were out of it. So delicious food in Iceland. Yeah, well, if you can get it, a lot of like I said, a lot of the places are Americanized. They're just like hamburgers and pulled pork and all the the other like regular pub food you would get here but if you go to a, try to find an icelandic restaurant then yeah you can get some good stuff nice I what did the we, whale fin taste like um i only had a bite of it um it was weird because it was it red fishy? it didn't taste fishy it was red it looked like red meat like almost like it, a piece it, of steak yeah it kind of looked like little strips of like uh I, i've seen it before tuna 
when they've uh, they strip it out like that, like they cut it into little thin strips. Yeah, I mean, it didn't taste fishy, uh, but it had the consistency of like being fishy, like a because I, I would fish assume, steak anyway. I would assume if it was like uh, the fin is blubbery, right? Yeah, so you can kind of see it. I think Shannon might have posted a photo of it where you can see like the the outside of it was like a, a different color than the inside where the red meat was. Yeah, so all you listeners can actually go look at Shannon's picture. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go go find it. It's on Was Instagram. there any time... <laughs> Just search for Shannon in Iceland. Yeah. Was there any time throughout the whole trip that you saw either of them in a state of undress? Um, there was one point where... Because we, we had to share a bathroom where uh, Shannon forgot her underwear or clothes or something. I forget. And I was sitting in the living room. And she's like, Joe, cover your eyes. And she, she walked out on her towel and grabbed something and went back to the bathroom. So, so you, you didn't, didn't cover your eyes? No, well, Brian was sitting there. So, yeah, I covered my eyes. <laughs> you didn't even look? You didn't want Brian to fight you? <laughs> I just held my phone up to my eyes because I was, I was doing something on my phone at the time. But you, but you were taking a picture. Yeah, well, they, they didn't know that. You, you peeked, yeah. right? We actually ended up like, watching a lot of uh, The Voice UK, which is weird. Uh, like when we were sitting at the apartment, and they had some weird boy band singing competition. So there's some fun stuff on. on did they the have telly. nudity on TV? They did. Um, did you ever see that movie, Your Highness? No. Uh, it has like it's James Franco. Um, yeah. There's some nudity Natalie in that, Portman. and Natalie Portman. Yeah, there's some nudity in that, and they they showed all of it. So at least you got to see something. Wait, what nudity was in that? No, didn't did yeah. Natalie Portman get naked in that? She didn't get naked in it, but there was a um, like. The what's it called? The Minotaur, like had full dong, and they showed that. Right, 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 right. Did you see that our friends, uh, uh, Michael J. Epstein and uh, Sophia Cassiola, they put out their movie, um, Blood of the Tribade or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but they've been like uh, going crazy on Facebook because in their movie they they show f- like penis, like flaccid penis. They're and going crazy guess, over it. It, well, no, they. I guess on Amazon, they've put it in like a hidden, like mature section, so you can't just freely find their movie, and they're all upset because uh-huh. it's like artful dick. <laughs> like art, that's artful penis. Well, what about like a Hollywood movie that has penis in it, like Forgetting Sarah yeah. Marshall or something? Yeah, that's fine. That's freely accessible because uh-huh. I guess you know. Is artful they, pe- they, Is artful penis just a flaccid penis? I guess so. I don't know. Is it really that artful? I mean, it could just be like, um, uh, what was that movie that just came out? Captain Fantastic. Yeah. It's just a penis. Where it's just a penis. I just watched that the other day. Was that uh, any good? Finally. Uh, it was good. Yeah. It was, uh, it was good. Depressing, though. Yeah, well, most of the Oscar movies are depressing. Yeah, they are. They are. I've been working my way through it. I watched uh, Live by Night the other day. Was that any good? Yeah, it was. It was really good, actually. I liked it. That's the Ben Affleck one, right? Yeah. It got, like, uh, really panned by critics. Did you hear, like, because of that, like, he might not be the Batman anymore? Because of that movie? Well, cause he's, he's not going to play Batman? Yeah, like, he wrote... Uh, that's the rumor going around right now. Um, I read a bunch of articles about it. I thought it was just he wasn't directing. He, Yeah, he's not directing anymore. But, like, so Live By Night, he wrote, starred in, and directed... And like that was his like passion project, and then it didn't do well in the theaters, and it got critically panned. So then it, they think it like might have shooken his confidence because now he's not directing the Batman anymore. Um, and there's some rumors that he might not be interested in even playing the Batman and trying to sort of snake his way out of the DC universe. Wouldn't it be great if in the next Batman movie, like, or if it's a Justice League or whatever it is? If Jesse Eisenberg plays Lex Luthor, Batman, and Superman, well, he like was he the worst part Murphy. about <laughs> about that movie. So I can only imagine if you take that and you amplify it three times, uh, it'll just be. I good. just imagine if there's a like a three way scene between all of them, just shoving Jolly Ranchers into each other's mouths. Oh, that would be so cool! I would watch it just for that. Jesse Eisenberg shoves Jolly Ranchers into things. No, that's that's a movie. With Jesse Eisenberg playing all that, that's a movie theater you'd want to shoot up. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if he played Lois Lane too. Like let's let's make he's just all of happen. the all of the the roles. Yeah, all yeah. the main roles. It's just Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, God, it, <laughs> he's not even bad. He's just 
No, he's not bad. right for that part. Well, he's definitely not right for the part. I don't know why I mean, they, they went with Jesse Eisenberg. In other comedies, I've, I've liked him plenty. I like, like, like Zombieland. I feel like the deal with Lex Luthor is that he's not insane. Um, and he, like, Jesse Eisenberg just plays him as, like, an insane person. Like, a, an inherently insane person. <laughs> yeah, like a fucking child. Yeah. Childish insane person. Uh, Joe, can you call our guest? Uh, okay. Hey, guest. Hannah. Hey. Hey, guest. Welcome to the show. Did so ever... what's it like being in a band? Did you ever hear anything from last week? I did. Uh, yeah, last week, my gosh, uh, they, it was actually a wrong number. It was off by one digit. <laughs> Were they like, I wonder so... why you didn't call? Yeah, so next week we should actually have the interview put together uh, for everybody. Uh oh. <laughs> Apparently happened? that happened. What happened? I pasted in the number and it made all those dial sounds. Did that guy we oh. left a message for ever call back? Uh, no, no, the gentleman. That <laughs> I don't. He did not call back. <laughs> uh, I don't think he was in a band. Um. Why can't I add? I don't, I don't know why you can't add. No, you just I be mean, able to add. I don't. If I click the plus button uh, to add people to this call, it just wants a Skype person. So how do I add a phone number? I don't know. How did you do it last week? I just did it. I hit add and I added. I said uh, show dial pad, and then I. I did. I just did that, and it has oh. a number in there. Um, I hit add, and then I, I don't know how I did it. Oh, maybe it was the plus button in the contacts page. Tune in every week as the Lotus Cast tries to figure out how to call people on Skype. I've never called anyone on Skype. When we do the phone calls on the show, it's always through Google Voice. Be great, like that's just what we do from now. Is just troubleshooting Skype every episode. Uh, helpful All right. tips. All right, let me try this. Uh, All right. Hopefully, I don't lose. Helpful you. tips. <laughs> helpful tips right here on how to uh, add people into your Skype call while doing interviews for your podcast. I have to choose a country or region. Damn it! Come on, Joe. I've never Adam, called anybody uh, in this. The guys on uh, on uh, Not Safe for Water Cooler, Jim and Matt, uh, they were talking on their episode last week, and I guess they came out and finally said like the reason that Shannon hasn't come back. Oh, is really? Because of is because of us. It was <laughs> us. Well, I mean, we knew that. That's our fault. All right. Uh, but why is she why is she taking it out on them? I don't know. All right, here, <clears throat> here we go. And a group call. You've done it. Oh, we'll find out. We're calling. Right, meow. I don't hear it ringing, so. Uh huh. It's making an uh, animated thing. Uh. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, Tanner? How you doing? Welcome to the show. You are live right now. Awesome. Here, let me is... step outside because there's a whole lot of commotion happening inside. No worries. Uh, we are joined uh, from, with uh, uh, we're joined by Tanner from Youth and Revolt. Uh, Youth and Revolt is uh, going to be going on tour here pretty soon. So if you want to check them out on Facebook.com slash Youth and Revolt, uh, you can find out uh, where they're going to be, what towns and cities they're going to be in. Check them out. Uh, you actually have a new album that is coming out tomorrow. That's got to be exciting, right? Oh, yeah, we're incredibly stoked. And also, just real quick, I also have uh, Chris who plays guitar for us. Hey, what's up? He's on the call as well. Okay, um, we, we didn't really want to talk to Chris, so if you could just hang up on him. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. No, we're, we're really stoked, though, about, about this record. Um, we've put a lot into it, and we've been kind of just, you know, biting our nails, like getting ready to release it for a long time. And so it, it's going to be a a really awesome sigh of relief to, to put it out and hear what people think about Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah, you can actually go on uh, on YouTube, uh, on Spotify, and check out the single Don't Wait For Me. 
Uh, I was listening to it, uh, and uh, it's really good. Um, I, I'm looking forward to the album coming out tomorrow. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, it, it's tough for me to find new music um, that I'm really into. You know, I, I feel like the older I get, the more I just, I don't know if it's I don't care or what it is, but it's harder for me to find bands that I'm really into. Um, and I, I, is it because you're stuck on the music you used to listen to and you just expect to find bands that are like that? Yeah, I think so. I think it's because, oh shit, you know, it's like, I I know what I like and I go to it and I don't really explore too much, uh, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, and you know, when I find a, like something like youth and revolt, I, I get excited like, oh shit, there's still people making good music out there. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, did, also, go ahead. Sorry, I, I, I'm lost in you know that one playlist that I set up five years ago. For sure, yeah. And I listened hard to, to the same albums that came out like ten years <laughs> on repeat. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happens. It's like uh, you you build that playlist and you just listen to it and it's comfortable. Like you know, you know, and you're always in a different mind frame when you hear a, a song when you're fucking sixteen versus uh, twenty six. So uh, everything kind of takes on a new meaning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you guys have a chance to catch the Grammys on uh, on Sunday? Uh, I I didn't. I don't know. Did, did you see like, Chris? bits and pieces on Facebook and whatnot? Yeah, I, yeah. I did see that Tw- pilots like had rip off yeah. chance or something like that, and they got their awards. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> That that's the way everything is now. Is like you can catch things in bits and pieces. Like you, nobody really commits to an entire project. It's all right. I can hear a, a fifteen second clip, or I can watch a you know minute and a half video of what happened. Why would I watch yeah, right. a three hour like thing when I can watch it in five minutes on Facebook the next day? <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of like, crazy. Cliff notes for every major life event. <laughs> Do, uh, well, you got to see what they're wearing on the red carpet. Right. Well, you got to see what political yeah. statements people are making through <laughs> yeah. music. Did um, Is that something that you guys are like aspire to? Like, I mean, it, the music industry is so much different uh, now than it was, you know, six years ago, 10 years ago, uh, 20 years ago. Like, it's everything so different. Is that something like you think, man, you know, I really hope one day... Uh, I'll be up on that stage uh, holding that fucking golden speaker. Um, I mean, I think obviously, yeah, you know, that would, that would be absolutely incredible if we got the opportunity to do that. Um, I think any, any artist would agree. uh, But, but at the same time, yeah, the, the music industry is changing. There's, there's so much out there now and there's such a medium for people to get stuff out there with, like the whole digital age of everything. Um, so so you have now this kind of, I don't want to say overabundance because that sounds like a negative thing when it's positive, but like yeah. this, this huge like saturation of, of really talented people. Um, so I, Is it more of an honor to get I, a Grammy or a People's Choice Award? Because the People's Choice Award is from the people. <laughs> so I guess, I guess the People's Choice Award because... Um, <laughs> Yeah, from the people, like you said. Uh, but either either one, I'm pretty stoked about. I definitely call my mom right after. Kids Choice Award, well, maybe. Would Would you say like on stage, like, "Hey, mom"? Uh, I don't know. Let you take this one away. <laughs> um, what would you say if you're a? Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't think I'd be cocky about it. I would probably, uh, you know, thank the bandmates, thank my mom for sure. I mean, she made me. And my dad helped, so I'd probably thank him, too. <laughs> Is there a person that you should thank but will forget at the time, and then they'll be angry at you? Um, I can think of many people who would be mad. I can think of tons of people. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just really upset. So, Yeah. Um, I have a question uh, about, uh, about the band here, Youth and Revolt. Um, so you know you you guys, uh, I, if you do some investigation, you know the first thing is like I, I wasn't a, a youth and revolt like starter fan. You know I didn't hear you guys 
uh, years ago and then start. Like I, I, I just recently found out about you. And, uh, you know, you look on, uh, start to investigate the band and where everybody's at. And, you know, you guys have been through a lot of changes, a lot of, you know, lead singers, uh, the whole thing. At what point, like, if you lose a lead singer of a band and then you, you, you get a new singer uh, and you, you lose members and you get new members, why not just go with a new band altogether? Is it because you're already invested in Youth and Revolt? Or is it is it like that stubbornness to keep going with it? Um, it it's not necessarily. Uh, I, I'd say the main reason is because not only us but also our label had time and money invested in in this name. Well, I mean, and, not only that, but like the two original members, Alex and Kenny, they wrote a majority of the material. So I feel like the heart. Like, you know, like, the soul of the band was still there. And, uh, I mean, I was in the original, original, like, the OG lineup. So, yeah. I mean, just getting everybody back together. And uh, I feel like the fire never truly died. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, just going is something special. And I, and I have to imagine going through a, kind of a lot of those struggles with, with band lineups. And then, you know, you get, you're on the label and you're just pushing out these singles and to finally lead up to this point to where tomorrow your your album is finally put together and uh, releasing, you, I mean, that's got to... Uh, does it have to be like kind of a weight lifted off your shoulders? Yeah, I'd say definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're... It's been a long time coming, and we're super excited. Mm -hmm. How, how yeah, many... Uh, sorry, go on ahead. The road. I was just saying, more so we're excited to uh, to get out and start touring again tomorrow. Yeah, right. absolutely. The The tour starts tomorrow. Um, you guys are going to be on the tour with uh, uh, a few different acts. Um, you're going to be on tour with, on the road with Magosh, uh, which we were actually supposed to interview last week, uh, but you know, with some technical difficulties, we were unable to. Uh, but you're you're going to be coming up to our area uh, in just uh, just a couple days. On the 18th, you're going to be in Worcester at the Raven, uh, which is pretty exciting. So uh, everybody in our area can, you know, rush up to Worcester and, and catch you guys. Uh, is there any of these towns that you're really looking forward to kind of getting back to? Maybe you visited in previous bands? Um, uh, I'm actually I'm excited about tomorrow. The Champ, I like that venue. Uh, also Pontiac, Michigan, the Crowfoot. It's a cool venue. Yep. And I also get a friend on that one because that's where I live, so... <laughs> or nearby there at least. I don't know, Chris, do you have any? Uh, this is my tour, so like every every stop is a good stop for me. How do you guys feel about uh how do you guys feel about the rock scene today? Like obviously rock and roll isn't the most popular genre as it was in like the nineties or eighties. Uh so like what's the scene out there? Are you meeting lots of people? I don't know. Uh, that, that's an interesting question. I, I think the rock scene is still uh, still very much alive. It's been kind of cut into a lot of more uh, more specific pieces than I think it was before. Or maybe not. I don't know. I wasn't I think, alive. That has a lot to do with the, the whole digital age as well, too. Yeah. When you're exposed, you can look up any type of genre at any time, you know. Yeah, so I, I think it's cool. It's just something that's a lot more sparse and and like uh, diverse than it used to be. And I think that's a beautiful thing because from there you get mainstream artists that are taking uh, kind of taking cues from things that aren't necessarily so mainstream. And it comes up with a pretty cool sound. Um, yeah. I, go ahead, Matt. <laughs> I was going to say that I do see that a lot. Like there's, I. I think because things are so accessible, uh, it, it opens, a, it kind of paves the way to uh, uh, to create really kind of unique and, and cool new music. Uh, but it also brings out a lot of the shit. It, it's kind of like the internet. Okay, well, you know, we were able to expand on all of this. Like, oh, we, we created a big fan group for like knitting or sewing or some bullshit like that. But hey, it also brought out people who, who love to, you know, uh, tweak their cat's nipples and those people found like their own little 
niche. It's like all that shit music. Like they they found their little niche too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Every time and then I... again, if that's if you know, if you're into cat's nipples, you know, it's <laughs> nice, I guess, to have an album for it. So <laughs> But maybe it isn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the good and bad of the internet. It's like, oh, great. You know, I, I can learn so much, but there are a lot of things you didn't really want to learn. Right. Every time around this year, yeah, like absolutely. Super Bowl, I see the argument again about like, oh, they're lip syncing at the Super Bowl and people arguing, did Lady Gaga lip sync or not? But it's it's always like, how do you feel about like seeing people do a live performance and they're not really putting effort into the music it's all about dance and visuals do you do you like well super bowl they haven't been live for a long time yeah it's, uh, it's all pre-recorded yeah they well it's so. like they're kind of live they record it the day before and then do it because the justin timberlake whole thing happened do you, do you see that but, uh, do you see that as like disrespectful to musicians though that like they're not allowed to perform their craft or is it all about the visuals is that still respectable I mean, it's definitely still respectable because, I don't know, like, the amount of work and energy and, like, time that they put into their craft, whether it be just, you know, dancing to a song or not, I mean, who's to say they deserve that spotlight? But, I mean, it's still super respectable. Yeah, I, I, and I mean, at the end of the day, they're still they're still kind of playing it live, just not, just not that yeah. day, and, and they don't have a choice, and what artists in their right mind would be like, no, I don't want to play the Super Bowl because I have to lip sync it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I, I, it is I, kind I, of funny I, that, that people don't, in certain situations, like if you're playing at the Super Bowl, you know, there's so many challenges, it's just easier to do it a certain way. Like, why is it why is it a big fucking deal if somebody lip syncs through that? It's Can we just... Can we just kind of move past that? Hey, at certain events, there's going to be lip syncing, and if uh, it, that's just how it is, can, why did can we lip syncing? Why did lip syncing ruin Ashley Simpson's career? Like when she did it on SNL, and then she like did that jig after like they found out about yeah. it. Why was that like a big deal? Because she failed. Same thing yeah. with Mariah Carey. Yeah, but like if we already know that yeah. they're lip syncing other performances, what's the BFD? You know? Yeah, and and like. Say she didn't lip sync, like say she just went on stage and, and was really sick and just sounded absolutely terrible, she would have gotten probably destroyed for that. So it's it's an understandable um, kind of last resort situation thing that you would that you would take. You know, if you're about to be on a huge uh, huge TV show and you're sick and you're going to sound terrible, to be like, all right, I'm going to lip sync this. You know, I, I thoroughly doubt she lip synced every single show. Yeah, it, it's always funny to me. Like, use fans of bands are probably like they're the worst people. They they really are. They they get like they attach themselves to like one album or one song, and that's what they love. And then once you do something different or a new thing, or you do a performance that's like big. You know, you become a sellout or you become an asshole, you become a poser, whatever it is, immediately. Like, if it's different than that one thing that they latch on to, they, and they become so hateful. Like, they lash out at the bands, they tell them, like, they're terrible people, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's really odd. I, and it's really only with, uh, with fans of bands. Yeah, it, I think it's, it's a very... Yeah, I'm unforgiving sure. kind of uh, atmosphere. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of the band uh, Say Anything, and I, all the time, whenever uh, Say Anything does anything new, they they have all of their like the fans of the older music saying, "Oh, we really wish that uh, the lead singer would go back to doing drugs so he would make good music again." How fucking shitty is that? Like, hey, we need you to yeah. go do drugs again. Pretty fucked up. <laughs> I mean, it's shitty, but it's do so you agree? Up. No. <laughs> do you, so you like the new music? I'm just curious. It's just really weird to me. And if it's, it's only fair. Like, nobody's ever like, oh, please, Robert Downey Jr., go back to doing crack. Uh, and, and, you know, it's like, it's really just bands. 
Maybe his drug dealer said it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It makes sense. Probably. It's like he had a, a big loss in revenue. Do you guys have do you guys have uh, girlfriends or significant others? Uh yeah, the whole band is taken actually. <laughs> oh really? Do you yeah. bring them on the road with you? No. that was such a hard no (laughs) it's like we have our our home girlfriends and our road girlfriends (laughs) so do they trust you not to do anything untoward no we do get to see them like i get to see my girlfriend i think chris oh not as long i have to say goodbye a couple Uh, but but lev our tour manager is single, so anybody yeah. listening, it's, it's going to be there. So the, All of the so ladies what? can take out their sexual frustration on your tour manager. Oh, yes, man. Absolutely. I, I can't get any of that Tanner dick, but hopefully I can get love the tour manager. <laughs> Lev, if you're listening, you, you hold them with that. Have them hook you up. <laughs> love is just sitting on the tour bus, just getting blown, and he's just got a big thumbs up to the rest of the band. <laughs> Yeah, what's funny is I actually told Lev earlier today that I would be his wingman. Y- oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like, hey, to get to this, you're going to have to go through love. <laughs> <laughs> they get all excited. They get still the eyes gloss over, and then you're already in the next town before they even realize what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh... It, I'm taking enough. Nice. It's, it's hard to tour with a band that's single because otherwise everyone's running off and doing whatever. And it, it's kind of nice that, that nobody has anything else in mind other than the business aspect of what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Well, see, I would almost say that it would be harder to tour and keep a band together that was taken just because it's like, oh, I've got this other thing that kind of takes precedent over the band. Like five Yoko Onos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a true other side to it, I guess. But that's a good devil's advocate to that yeah. argument. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, luckily, we don't have that problem. I think we all have pretty supportive girlfriends. Yeah, that that's tough, and it's really tough to find. Like, it's tough to find somebody that's supportive, uh, and will kind of oh, yeah. take you through that. Yeah, you know. For a month. <laughs> and then come back for two weeks and leave for another month. Right, right. How long are you guys out on the road this stretch? Uh, two and a half weeks, about, about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so fairly short. Yeah. And this is a headlining tour. Like, uh, you, the, you're gonna, you guys are going to be headlining, correct? Yeah. Okay, so do you have any... Are you going to continue to headline the rest of the year? Are you playing in any supportive tours? We are... Hopefully, like, we're planning pretty much to support after this. Yeah. We wanted to take this opportunity to kind of uh, play intimate shows for the fans who have supported us through this whole member change process. And we kind of want to be like, hey, all right, so here's a tour for our record release where we're headlining it and we want to make sure that, like, you get an opportunity to, like, talk to us and have us tell you thank you for for doing the things that you've done. Do you... Do you guys yeah, have we Do you guys have any of those shitty fans though that are like uh you know fuck this none of this sounds like it used to fuck these guys Yeah that's <laughs> I mean YouTube comments are the place to go for that <laughs> Yeah Yeah it, I mean it that's a thing you know mm-hmm. if you change why why do you think that is man like why do you fucking think that like why why can't they just say, you know what, I don't like this, so I'm going to move on with my life. Like, that's it. Why did, Why is it that it has to get so visceral and it's like, oh, fuck these guys, I hope they burn in a fucking puddle of AIDS fire. Like, they just get so angry. It's a million dollar question. Uh, pent up anger, I guess? I wonder that all the time, honestly. Like, YouTube comments, kids on Xbox Live, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, anything that's not face-to-face People get absolutely vicious. It's weird, but um, I, I hope yeah, that one day I, we're able to find that out. Like, just why it, it becomes such a visceral, like that they have to go out of their way to write a comment, and it's so angry and it's so nasty, 
And it's just like, hey, you know what? I like this one thing and I don't like this. And that's it. Like, I don't have to buy a ticket. I'm not forced to buy this album. I'm not even forced to listen to this song. It's just, it is what it is. Like, we, can we just be? Well, it's not really out life? of the way anymore. Like, on YouTube, you can literally, you're watching the video and their box is right there. You just type in, like, you guys are shit fucks and <laughs> post it. <laughs> shit fucks. Comment one said that I've probably tasted my own cum. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? Have you tasted your own cum? I, I have not. I actually haven't. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, come know, on, be honest. Because, Everyone's at least well tasted it. To be fair, the comments said probably. <laughs> Tanner, to be, uh, I've had this argument with my co-host before that I think that every man on this planet Earth that is old enough to jerk off has tasted their own cum I by accident. Haven't. My my co-host, they stand by their ground that they have never tasted it, but I think they're lying to me. I don't know. I, to be honest, I, as far as I can remember, unless I was like, like just in that kind of transitional age, I, I don't think I have. I don't know. Chris, I, do I think in? I think that everybody at some point, it's like you're 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 fucking nine, ten years old. You're just starting to jerk off for the first time, and you accidentally it was it was a misfire. Like no, that thing it's went not off. accidentally because like why would you do that at that age? Like it's not like you've not used your penis before. Like you've urinated out of it, and you would never drink your urine. So why would you assume some other fluid came out? Yes, I'll I'll try drinking that instead. Chris, back me up. Your argument is flawed. God damn it. <laughs> it's fine. It's you know what? You guys don't have to back me up on it. I, I've tasted my own cum. That's just how we'll move away from this conversation. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I was I was hoping for one of you guys to help me out here, you know, kind of fish me out of this hole, but whatever. Chris it's fine. He, we probably have. <laughs> <laughs> um well, uh, yeah, you can catch, again, Youth and Revolt. They're on uh, tour. Uh, they're going to be all over the place. Uh, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New York, Michigan, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, so, you know, just go to their Facebook page, go to their website, uh, and uh, find out where they're going to be. Their new album comes out tomorrow. Uh, you can check it out on Spotify. What's, what is the best way that it supports you guys uh, for them to get the album, like, is there a place that they can purchase it that it best supports you? Just, uh, I mean, a physical bundle would be the best, and then you could come to a show and then buy the CD. Yeah, that's that's ten out of ten, and then we'll all give you hugs. Yeah. Do you? Well, I mean, is it safe to hug some of these people? You think? Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> We've got like. <laughs> that'll it'll pat everyone down for you know. that's good yeah before a hug you'll have to go through a pat down <laughs> yeah. what's what's your guys favorite uh band from new that's, jersey no. otherwise spotify apple music any of those are totally feasible ways to at least listen to the music if you don't have the means to purchase it do you get a lot of money from spotify like if i just stream your album does it give you like four cents or four dollars i haven't got Spotify ever, so so I would say no. You're still waiting but, on that check, so don't stream it on yeah, Spotify. I mean, a lot, yeah, well, a lot of that stuff goes back to your label. Um, yeah, a lot of the streaming things, unless you're you know Taylor Swift and you're having someone play it a million times a day. She's well, actually she, not old. So. Yeah. Oh, that's all. Oh, that's, Okay, all right, so unless you're The weekend or Justin Bieber and you're having someone play Well, T-Swift, yeah, went, no, right. she went to Apple Music instead, so she's probably having someone play it a million times on Apple Music. Yep. Yeah, exactly. She probably actually signed a contract at some point with Apple Music. You two did it. I'm sure they got paid for that. Oh, boy, did Record, they. But it was actually pretty good. That one that like got forced to put on like everyone's phone automatically had it. Thought it was a decent record, but everyone just hated it because. Yeah, because they forced it like, on everyone. Forced, I didn't yeah. even bother yeah. listening to it because of that. People don't like to be inconvenienced. Like it was just like, oh, this just popped up here. It's something I have to deal with. Well, it wasn't just that. You know, Sometimes yeah. it deleted all the music on your phone and replaced it with that. That's why people were upset. 
Oh, I, that I didn't know. Yeah. yeah well, that's a side quest. That was a dumb <laughs> move on Apple's. It was like a bug in their, on their end. What's your guys' favorite <laughs> band out in New Jersey? My Chemical Romance. Yeah. They're out in New Jersey? Yeah. Springsteen. Oh, for sure. Out of there, uh, My Chemical Romance then. It's They're not the boss? Huh? It's not the boss? <laughs> or Bon Jovi? Yeah. Or, yeah. or Uptown Girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. I had so many people from New Jersey. Or Miss There's Congeniality, Sandra Bullock. New Jersey's a happening state. There's a lot of bands out of there. Yeah, all right, cool. I guess I'll, yeah. I'll have to... I see you've Googled <laughs> New Jersey bands. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, well see you later. <laughs> Big gulps, huh? Uh, again, you can catch uh, Youth and Revolt uh, on tour tomorrow. Uh, definitely go after the new fucking album. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, if it's anything uh, similar to their single, uh, Don't Wait For Me, uh, which I've really been enjoying. Uh, guys, before we let you go, is there anything you want to leave the, the people with? Leave it to you, Chris. Uh, just you know, pick if you can pick up that album, that means the world to us. Like every sale counts. So I mean, we're really excited to get it out there and for people to jam it. I, I, th- I think that if you guys would have admitted that you have tasted your own cum before, the sales would skyrocket. Well, this interview goes. Well, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, We really do appreciate it. Good luck on the tour. Good luck with the album. Uh, And, you know, hopefully we'll uh, we'll cross paths again one day. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having us again. Yep. Have a good good night, guys. And there they go. I think you scared him away. I don't think they like the, the cum question? No, I think you uh, you scared them. I really got the sense that both of them really didn't like Joe. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be the only ones. <laughs> oh, 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 Adam. Adam, that's funny. So, uh, you know, I, I guess moving on from Youth and Revolt, we're really glad they came on the show. Uh, I've, I was talking with Joe uh, before the episode tonight, and uh, Adam, he's 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 not happy uh, with us uh, about the episode last week. Joe's not happy. No, no, he he got I a little can't... passive aggressive before the show. Uh, the first thing that he said was, "I said, oh yeah, well we tried to call our guest last week." And uh, they didn't answer. And he says to me, oh, so he didn't really have to do a show. Well, you didn't. And I was like, you made a big deal oh. about doing one. And you I, didn't I have didn't to really do it. I didn't really make that big of a deal about doing the show, except you that. You did. Well, we, no. Yeah, if you listen back to the show, uh, you brought it up that I said that, yeah, you, you wanted to do the show because you had the interview scheduled because you forgot I was going to Iceland again. And then uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> Again, Adam, do you hear this? Do I'm saying this, this because, this like, really? yeah, because I heard you on the show say this, like, with like such anger that, like, what was the deal with Joe not letting you into your environment? <laughs> what is the deal with Joe not letting you into your environment? And the last time I went on vacation and you scheduled a show again, um, yeah. I got in trouble with my roommates and it ruined the rest of my okay. vacation. So, well, first of all, you got no fucking roommates. Um, you know, it, it, listen, dude, uh, this kind of goes back to you just getting a little oversensitive about shit sometimes. Like, no, I, we're... it's not that I was oversensitive about it. I was, I was upset about it because I wasn't, I, I wasn't really feeling that great. Like I, I was kind of like a little depressed and then I listened to the show and I was like, the show first off was incredibly depressing to listen to. The two of you have no chemistry. Like you would talk and then there'd just be silences. Like long silences, and Adam, I was like, yeah, he, he he shit on our show. He shit on us talking last week. Yeah, because like terrible. one of you would say something, and then the other one had no response, and then <laughs> there could be these these silences, and then like you tried to talk about like where do you think the disconnect between us went, and then you couldn't really remember uh, what it was, and then you kind of remembered the uh, 
the the thing where you pranked Adam, uh, and you kind of remembered the job thing, but even still, it was just I don't know. It was not. Joe, you sound pretty you know, upset. He's, he's, he's not enticing. You sound pretty upset. He sounds upset. He sounds bitter that we did a podcast without. I'm not bitter. I don't. I honestly don't care about that. To be fair, there was a delay on Skype. What delay? That's why there were. There seemed like there were pauses. Well, why don't we have a delay now? We have almost the same setup. Because we were both on Skype. We're both on Skype right now. You and me are together. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's a, Matt is on Skype, and we're on Skype with Matt. Like, it's the same thing as what was happening last week. But there's still that moment so, where we think we're talking over each other. I, yeah, I which still is happening. But uh, So Joe was telling me before the show, he's like, uh, you know, uh, the whole thing about, I guess, not letting Adam into his apartment to do the show was a big deal. You did. You made a big deal out of it. I mean, yeah, I thought to myself, I was like, well, it's kind of crappy that, you know, we it didn't even let aff- him in there. Yes, but it didn't even affect you. I set it up so it didn't even matter. I understand, and it worked out fine. Yeah. I'm just saying it would have been easier. I just don't understand why you were making a deal out of it when, if you were in my position, you wouldn't, you would have done the exact same thing. If I was, if I was in your exact position, if I were you, then you'd be me, and I'd use your body to get to the top. Um, what? I, I would, I would have absolutely uh, no, let wouldn't. Adam in. T- yeah, I would have. No. I don't think it's unreasonable to not want people in your apartment when you're on vacation. Um, that's actually kind of weird. Like, it's usually you have somebody that comes by and checks on things. Uh, no, that's never the case unless you have, like, a pet. Or you just have people that house sit. People house sit all the fucking time. I, people that's not people a normal thing. It. Like, that's not a normal thing for regular people to just have house sitters unless there's a pet or a child involved. Actually, uh, they have people that come by and grab the mail and put it on the counter, and the, the people house people it. People don't all do the that professionally. That's not a thing that Say, happens around here. Hey, check the pipes. Make sure they're I've not frozen. I've never had a, a house sitter growing up. I've never uh, talked to anybody okay. that had house sitters, N- Joe, unless it was like a relative I... that came in. Neither have I, but they exist. Yeah, so I don't understand why you are usually shocked like by the idea I... that I wouldn't like somebody in my apartment. Uh, Joe, usually people like you and I. We don't have house sitters because we're not, you know, wealthy enough to have one. Yeah, which is most of America. But, yes, but, I mean, if you have a friend, it's like, hey, can you stop by and fucking, you know, do this? Uh, grab yes, the mail, if you have a pet or something, but it's not a big deal. I was gone for a couple days. I didn't need anybody to grab my mail. Yeah, no. but, I mean, again, it's just like, hey, uh, you know, it'll be easier for you guys if you just do the show. It like wasn't this. easier, and even if Adam did come to my apartment, he doesn't know how to use the the computer here or the equipment here. So what's the point, I, Adam? Are you too stupid to figure that out? <laughs> we talked about that last week too. Well, you don't know or how two to. Two weeks ago, you don't know how to broadcast from this. Like I didn't. I had to figure me. it out. You could have shown me. Why? What's the point? When just have Matt do it when he's done it before. I listen. I it's just it. not a big deal. Uh, you made a bigger right. deal and out it of it. it it isn't a big deal. It's just something that we discussed, and then you became oversensitive about it. I wasn't oversensitive about it. I was upset about it, and I was upset that uh, you, you kind of just... You had to stop listening to the show. Yeah, because you kind of just threw me under the bus, and you started attacking... The only time you two became animated was when you started slamming me. <laughs> and I, I couldn't... I, honestly, I felt so awful about it myself. I didn't literally did not sleep that night, and I went into work feeling miserable the whole day. And like when that was the first day I kept, got back from my vacation. People were like, what's wrong with you? Why are you so depressed? Why did you even oh, listen? So you're going to put that on us? Yeah, because you guys are assholes. Why did you even listen? I don't know. I was bored Tuesday. I didn't have much going on. Is there a particular thing you'd like to address that we said about you? No, I don't want to talk about it again. Okay. I don't want to get into it. Like it's, it's awful. What Was it that bad? What? I think we, we talked about you having a vagina. I know you say that like literally. It, you hit wells that you've already hit several times. Like I think they're dry yes. at this point. What so it, if um, they're dry wells, then what's it, what's the big deal? I don't. It's just because I wasn't feeling really great about myself that day, and then you started picking apart. Like it seemed like you had had conversations about me behind my back before to other people, and it seemed like this was like it was really well rehearsed. You had examples ready. You had <laughs> stuff ready to go. <laughs> And but you, you even said if you hadn't talked the... to somebody about it before, it was like you clearly put a lot of thought into it. 
And then I just felt really miserable. Like nobody, like I don't really go around analyzing people's faults. It was but well it seemed researched. Like, but it seemed like you did, and it just felt really awful. Uh, well, first of all, if you don't know by now that all I do is go, I'll go around. I know analyzing you do. Everybody. You do that with everybody, and I understand that. It just, I, it didn't, it didn't feel great on on Tuesday. So I don't know. It just kind of ruined my night. Well, don't, don't, but don't project. Don't throw that on us. Don't. No, make I'm us throwing it on you because. No, Honestly, you dude, didn't have to. You didn't you. have to slam me in the show. I wasn't there. You didn't even have to talk about me. To. I we even didn't said have to, but we did. And if, even if we did, even if you were there, which we would talk about the same things, we would say the exact same things. If you, it's not like I didn't think. Oh shit, I'm gonna say this. Joe's never gonna hear this one. I know like, that, but like honestly, it just it. I don't know. Just why do you have to slam me when I'm not around? Like I said, the best time to talk about people is when they're not around. I don't know. I, I know just it was just kind of. Were you upset by us talking about Dave too? No, I didn't even listen to that long. I don't. I didn't know no, if you talked about Dave. Could. I stopped. Mm. I'm just saying, man. If you can't, if like you, you can't throw it. Make us responsible for that. Like that's your own insecurity. That's your own thing. Like you need to own that. Yeah, but like I don't actively go out. I would never say anything about okay. you guys. That's, I don't actively slam not, not you me. on like ever. Okay. Well, I, I'm not. I, if you can't see again, this is where, and we've had this conversation so many times before, dude, where it's like, Hey, uh, you know, like, can, if you can't take the stupidity of all of this, this is like, that you, this is like Shannon leaving, not safe for water coolers because we were just being stupid. Yeah, I know. Time. It, I just, it sucked because You're Shannon. <laughs> I, it sucked because it wasn't a good time for me. And it never is when I, I'm the one that getting slammed. And usually like, right. why don't you ever slam anybody else? You never slam Dave. Or, or we Adam. always slam Dave. What uh, the fuck? Never. Oh, don't, dude. Yes, I've slammed. I've gotten into huge arguments with Dave. Well, you know what? I'm gonna start drafting up all your faults, and then I'm gonna slam you on the Please show. Please do, dude. I draft up my own faults and lay them out on the show. Yeah, well, I do that I'm all gonna, the fucking time. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna write a, an essay. How on many times, Adam? Adam, how many times have I come in here with like I'm the only person that will admit that I've tasted my own cum? Yeah, yeah, it's not it. Like I admitted that it did never happen for me because I've never wanted to, and it's never been a thing. Like I think I was smart enough at eight to know, like, don't drink things that come out of your penis. <laughs> I'm the only person that will come in here and say this really fucking embarrassing thing happened to me. I've told you so this many embarrassing things, embarrassing things that have happened to me. I would add to that if that was the case. That just never happened. You're so you're so wrapped up in your own faults. You don't have enough time to make fun of other people's faults. Because I don't analyze people's <laughs> faults. I really don't think about what's wrong with other people. Well, maybe if you thought about you thought do. more about what's wrong I with don't. other people, you'd feel better about oh, yourself. Hold on, no, don't, don't even because we'll sit around that that table at the Lotus and open up any discussion about anybody, and you'll be like, "Yeah, I don't know why they do that." You'll you'll go on. Yeah, because like I'm not thinking, but you'll you'll ask because you you oh, constantly think about people's faults, like we've just said, Adam. And then you'll this? be like, "Do you see this, Adam? It's yeah. me." It's my fault. It is your fault because I'm never, I don't actively think of that. And then when you ask me, what do you think the deal is with Dave? And then I'll just be like, I don't oh, know. Here, here, here's what maybe it could be. I don't know. I'm not thinking about it. But you're like, well, you let me list all of these reasons you. why I think it's this thing. Come on, Joe. You love to gossip. I don't love to gossip. Yes, you do. Adam. I'm just not a yeah, gossiper. Adam, does he not? He fucking loves to go into it. He <laughs> goes on tears on everybody. I don't go on tears on anybody. <laughs> you do. Like who? Don't even fucking. Dude, if you, I could strike up a conversation. If, if this mic wasn't on right now and we weren't going out live, I could start up a conversation about so many fucking people Who? and you'd be like, oh, you would – you really want to go down this road? You really want to go down let's, this Let's just do Dave because he's usually – was on the show anyway. So oh. d- <laughs> bring something up and then okay. we'll see. We, after we slammed you, we slammed Dave last week. I can't. I can't because there's other people involved that don't want to say that they're involved. So what? It's some private story but about you've Dave? Gotten, You've gotten into so many gossipy shit about so many people. You, you get dragged so me gossipy. into them. <laughs> oh, my. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You dragged did. yourself. Okay. You dragged your fucking self, dude. Again, I'm not going to blow up other people's spots, but you, it, 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 this is what's so weird. Uh, like, I can't even fathom is is just taking responsibility. I can sit here and I say, don't, you know there's what? Not, yes, I'm not actively love, gossiping about I people. Love to ju- oh. What? <laughs> I, I can't. I, I, okay, sure. I, it's you. You live in such a weird world of, of non truths. You just tell yourself lies truths. all the time. It's not lies, Joe. Would it upset you to know that Paul let me into your apartment on Saturday afternoon? For what? 
This guy had to grab something. I don't think Paul would do that, for one. What? What would you grab for my apartment? I need to grab something for the show we did last Thursday. On Saturday? Yeah. Two days after Thursday. I, I think Goldilocks is right. She says in the chat, the show last week. I, I do appreciate the fact that uh, Michelle liked it, but I thought last week's show was terrible. I, I don't know if you agree, Adam, but it just it was dragged out and... And it, it, it didn't. Yeah, because I could even tell in the first half hour you're running out of stuff to talk to. And when the band, like, yeah, you tried no, calling was, the yeah. band, and then we, they didn't answer. And then just you were for like, the guest, and we had to, like, you said we didn't have to do it. If we didn't have yeah. a guest, we never would have done it. Of course not. And then when the guest didn't answer, I knew right in that second, Matt was just like, fuck, I don't know what to talk about. Oh, let's slam Joe. What was the deal yeah. with Joe not letting you into his apartment? Wasn't that weird? <laughs> that was Matt. That was my impression. Yeah, of Matt. that was, and I'll fucking own it like a, a rightful human being. Just fucking, I'll own it, take responsibility. Unlike yourself, who apparently can't. I'm not a gossiper like you are. Oh my god! Did you Adam, hear that thing he about like Dave? A motherfucker? He gossips like a motherfucker, does he not? He loves it. I don't, <laughs> don't love the gossip. You do, dude. You're a hen. I'm not a hen. Not you a hen. are. You're a fucking hen. You're the strangest person. You can't own what you are. I'm not a gossiper. I've never noticed it. You've never noticed it. I've not. You love. You start off. You just you. Uh, what? I'm just like. Oh, here's the the gossip that you're missing. Hey, man, I haven't talked to you all day. Here's some gossip. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Yeah, I've that's never said that. Pretty spot on. I've never said that. <laughs> not those exact words, but it's like oh. Yeah, so the so and so does so and so, and then they ask me to so and so, and blah blah blah. You're what, so, me wait, if I tell you about my day, just what happened, that's gossiping. No, 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 no. It's fine, dude. That's fine. You can live in your world of of denial. You're always telling I, me how I much hope, you hate Supergirl. I I how really that hope gossip, that one day though? you can uh, you you can uh, uh, move past that. Don't you think it would upset her to hear what you're saying about her? She's not a real person. Uh, how is that gossip to say I don't like a TV show? What about all those writers who put so much hard work into that show? I would say that to their face. Their show is terrible. <laughs> God, you know how how badly that would hurt their feelings. I hope so. You maybe would... they'd become better writers. Well, maybe you'll become a better person. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mike uh, is saying that Goldie is a Dave apologist. I would agree. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, <laughs> Especially because the next line, Dave Harvey is a cool guy. <laughs> well, I think we even talked about it last week. With uh, I just don't, I don't want to get too much into Dave. Dave's trying to find himself or something. I don't know. Um, Do you think he's eat pray loving? Maybe. I'm. Uh, I'm. I, I'm going through this weird thing where I'm, um, I'm I think I'm losing my hair like crazy so what, like I'm shedding? trying I don't know I think it's like thinning out a lot Is it? and I've bought this really expensive shampoo that's supposed to like rejuvenate hair follicles you know it doesn't work right away right I understand that and I, I that's my problem like I always like that's that's why I can't commit to things when it, it's it, like Exercise. I can't commit to exercise because it doesn't happen right away. It's it's it takes like a year yeah. to even well, notice even results. That shampoo. Like even if you went on, I think Rogaine or Propecia, it's uh, it takes weeks or months for it to have any effect. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that I can I don't know retain. Like I hope it starts to work. And is it just like clumping out in the it. shower or something, or when you comb it? No, I, I'm not even. It's just like when I gel my hair up and I look at it, it's just like I can see my scalp. And it really annoys me. Are you like looking at the top of your head in the mirror? Yeah. You do realize that it's because you can, it's because of where your eyes are that you see the top of your scalp. Okay. I'm just telling you, it looks thin. It looks thin and I'm losing my mind and I'm just trying to fucking not lose my hair. Are you like looking at everyone else's hairline to compare to your own? It's terrible, dude. That's all I can see now. It's, Joe got a haircut. Yeah, I did. Um, I went on my birthday. I actually took the day off of work on my birthday, and I uh, I did it like a little treat myself day. 
Uh, and I I went and got a haircut the in the morning and um, yeah you, you you got a Matt and Dave haircut I did um, I was debating uh, whether or not I, I would do it um, and then I, I got there and I told them that I wanted uh, the haircut that all the cool kids have where they shave the sides of the head did you say that <laughs> I did did you really walk in and say well that? she's like what do you want and I was like I I didn't really know how to phrase it how like, hard. How hard was it for that person not to take the straight razor and just slide it across your throat? She was like a, a nice older lady. She gave me her business card. She wanted me to come back. I think because I over-tipped. Uh, it, it was like $25. I like, your, I like your haircut. It looks good. Um, Thanks. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I've been really happy with it. Um, the you, only time like, I wasn't... You made a big change. Like You went from a Bob's mom's haircut style to... Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, when it was longer, it was, it was that. But um, more recently, it was more like a Justin Bieber... like. Bangs. It was nothing like just. It looks kind of like Donald Trump right now. It's not <laughs> combed forward though. I don't know. Okay. You like it though? You you're happy with the haircut? Uh, I liked it. Um, it the first couple of days I didn't. Um, she gave me some gel there or pomade rather, uh, and then she didn't sell it, so I had to go find it on Amazon, and and I had to wait till it came back. Um, uh, till I came back from after my vacation. Uh, because like when I was on vacation, the the pomade I used didn't have like a high enough hold, so it was just kind of flopping yep. everywhere. Um, what did what did you end up getting? Uh, it's called Suavecito. Have you heard of it? Okay, yeah, I have. And uh, Dave I'll, I'll actually recommended it to me. Oh, I'll, well. I'll get the name of the one that I get. I really like it. It's got a good smell to it as well. Yeah. Um, so this is one really they used at the barbershop, and then I couldn't remember the name of it, and I went out with Dave <laughs> that night. I, and he Goldilocks said, in the chat. I'm sorry, I gotta interrupt you. Yeah. Goldilocks in the chat says that uh, I appreciate how Joe changes Bitmoji. I did. I, I will say that was like the first. E- I feel I like you got your hair cut, and the first thing that you did was change your fucking Bitmoji. I was piece of shit. I was super active on Snapchat last week. I wanted to make sure it was up to date. Suck. Uh, yeah, that was the first thing I did. Is I changed it. They don't even have really the haircut I have. It's kind of like a mohawk bitmoji, but it was the closest thing. Um, but I thought it, I thought it looked nice. Um, and a bunch of people at work like complimented and said it looked really nice. So, um, now that I have the uh, the pomade, it, it kind of glues itself down, which is nice. It used to flop all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does it feel better? I the the that haircut I've I've noticed like feels really good on the head. I like, I've, have just... been touching my scalp a lot more, like the sides and the back, because it's weird how short it is. And you, after a week, though, it's like it's really grown in because it used to be like I could feel like bare scalp. And now it's like um, it's not that. But I have noticed it's a lot colder <laughs> on my head. Gold, Goldie, Goldie said you didn't even wait two hours. I'm sure you changed your bitmoji while you were in. The I chair told you getting your I, I had to treat myself day like literally like after I went to the, the barbershop. I went yeah. to the mall and like kind of just hung around the mall and walked around and like did whatever and like eh, you know I got a, like a little drink at one point I was just like sitting you there You got a drink? Yeah, like I, I was done shopping for a little while. Like, Wait, hold on. You got your hair cut. Yeah. And then you decided I look so good. I'm going to peruse on over to the fucking mall. No, well, honestly, I didn't buy myself a little drink. No, I got I got other things. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, I have a whole day off. Like, I I didn't know where to go. So I was like, maybe I'll hang out at a bar. You confidence with yourself, right? Yeah. And I was like, maybe I'll go hang out at a bar. But it was like, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning. So then I went to the mall and I kind of walked around to see if anything caught my attention. I went to GameStop and I bought a 3DS game and I bought some chocolates from the chocolate stand and uh, (laughs) (laughs) went to Newberry Comics. And then, like, I took a little break and and got, like, a, uh, a mango smoothie. And in the I, did, I wish I wish I didn't know all those other details. Yeah. I just like picturing you getting a haircut, going to the mall and purchasing a little drink. Yeah, you know what? I went to the mall and I got myself a little beverage. I got myself a little beverage. A yeah, I got smoothie. myself a little boba tea. And then yeah, well, they little, have, I don't like boba. Little but, orange Julius. Uh, I've never yeah. been there either. Treated myself to a little orange Julius. But I see a pretzel. But while I was sitting the there uh, with my drink, I updated my Bitmoji and snapped uh, some stuff out and. I found myself a parking spot right next to the door. Yeah, and it turns out if you go there on like a Tuesday at like eleven a.m., there's like nobody at the mall. So yeah, uh, yeah, except for all the people that are homeless. Exactly, um, and a lot of old people that walk the mall, which is odd. Like they just do laps. So, power walk, yeah. That's yeah. you in uh, the next year, I'm sure. Power walking through the mall. Yeah. 
That's what old people do is they go to the mall and walk. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's why I saw a lot of that. So you want to, uh, you could like have discussions with them, make them feel like they're p- actual people. I didn't actually end up talking to anybody there except for like the GameStop guy who kept wanting me to renew my subscription to whatever their pro plan was. Jordan Pacheco uh, works at GameStop now. Yeah. And every time I see him post about like one of his stupid deals at GameStop, I get angry. I just want to be like, GameStop is <laughs> the worst fucking store. The only I reason hate GameStop I, so I much. couldn't stand being in there, but the only reason I went in there is my sister called me just when I was outside the store. I was like, I'll just wander the store while she's talking to me. And then after I got off the phone with her, uh, I got an email from GameStop that was just like, happy birthday. Here's a 20% off coupon on, on a used game. And I was like, I'm leaving on my trip in a couple of days. I'll, I'll buy a used uh, 3DS game. So I bought, um, I bought Mario Kart uh, for like 20 bucks. I hate GameStop though. Yeah. This is a terrible store. Like it's just every time I, he, he's like promoting, oh, hey, make sure that you get a pre-order. I'm just like, I fuck. He, I, yeah, he, they asked pre-order. about the pre-order too. And I was just like, I just want the game. And then it was yeah. like he he needed to find my my dumb like I used to have their like GameStop Pro or whatever it was where you get extra on trade ins, even though I never traded in anything. Um, and he had to find it, and then like he needed it to apply the coupon, and it was like a whole thing. And I was like, I just want to buy the game and leave, and not. Did talk they like to you. ask for your phone number? They asked for my phone number, and then that wasn't attached to my account. So then I had to show him my email address because I had the email with the coupon. It was a whole thing. If you're if you're going in one of those stores and they ask for your phone number, you say no, and then I don't really care. I, I give do they them, still sell it to you if you say no? Of course they do. Um, I give them my Google Voice number because I don't I don't really care about that. I just want to be like no. You can say no. I'm well, still gonna sell it to you. I'll just, you I'll just turn no. around and yeah. walk out, and they'll be like, "Sir, you can still buy it." <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll just be like, "Wait, where are you going? You're not gonna buy this." <laughs> I did. Like God, I went I to. I went to um, Newberry Comics in the mall, and that's like humongous at the Natick Mall. Um, it was like a huge store, and I, I picked up a couple things. And uh, that like is almost just as bad as GameStop Newberry Comics. It's everything's so expensive in there, and they sell almost the same items. It's if they, except for the games, but like any of the the, the little toys and 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 um, action figures, like that's all all Newberry Comics has now. Matt, did you watch the Grammys? Um, I was just like the guys earlier. I saw the clips the next day. I, I saw the the only thing that I saw was the Metallica Lady Gaga yeah, collaboration. That's all I really wanted to talk about anyway. What'd you think of that? Um I mean outside of the issues that they had, the technical difficulties, I thought it was fine. I, I, I don't like I don't know. Anybody who gets bent out of shape over that just really I, I don't get it like it's just you, you need to just fig, get a hobby figure out whatever it is that you aren't getting in your life that you really need to complain that lady gaga and metallica perform together um i mean i think she's got a good voice uh i think that collaboration would have been great if it hadn't i i don't think they should have done moth into flame I think it would have been really kind of cool if they did an older song. It, but um, it kind of sounded to me I, like she had just learned the song that afternoon. Probably did. Like, I, I mean, I mean, "Moth into Flame." I, I think it's a good song, but it's definitely not one that I listen to a lot. Um, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't do one of the better songs off that album. Uh, it's still a good song, like I said. But um, yeah, I mean, it was fine. I, it just his mic didn't work, which sucked. Is it acceptable to be annoyed that they that person who introduced them introduced Lady Gaga <laughs> but didn't introduce Metallica? Introducing Lady and the Gagas. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were kind of just flushed off as Lady Gaga's backup um, band. Uh, yeah, it just you know uh, whoever it is was stupid. It was a mistake. I didn't um, even see that. That clip I heard, yeah, like there was a, an error with the performance or whatever, and and they had to restart it. Yeah, his his James Hetfield's mic didn't work for any of it, and he would him and Lady Gaga had to sing together, and she was singing a song. I I don't know. I I, I don't watch the Grammys. I don't care about the Grammys. I don't watch any of the award shows. Did you see Adele um, uh, like basically say that she's sharing her Grammy with Beyonce? Because well, before we get to that, um, 
Yeah, James Hetfield's mic didn't work, but did you see Adele did the George Michael tribute, and she fucked up and just stopped the whole thing, and they started over. Yeah, well, I'm I'm sure that if James Hetfield stopped the performance, um, they would have fixed his mic, and then they could have continued, but they decided to keep going. So, I mean, that's on James Hetfield, <laughs> you know? That's, that's not on... Uh, it, he, he very well could have done the same thing. I'm fine with him continuing on. They, they had another singer. I think if, I think that if there was not, if Lady Gaga wasn't there to sing, um, he probably would have done something, but yeah. Who, if he, if he had done the same thing that Adele did, who would have been the bigger diva? Um, I didn't even think that it was a diva. Like, Why is it like, a diva move? thing? It, like she wanted to do a tribute like, and it, she screwed it up. So she, she's like, I yeah. want to do this right. So she started over. It wasn't like, yeah, yeah uh, I don't mind that. But like, I feel if Hetfield had did that, it would have been seen as being a diva. Oh, I don't think so. Hey, my mic's he, not working. Yeah. If he, if he restarted I can't it. I perform this song for you <laughs> because my mic isn't working. Please fix it, and then I'll continue. The premise is also a little bit different because she was doing a tribute to like a dead artist, uh, and he was just doing like you know his own thing. I honestly would have liked it better if Metallica had done a Gaga song rather than Gaga doing a Metallica song. Um, I I think that it would be really cool uh, because I I'm always interested in in collaborations like that. If they had done some sort of mutation song where it was like, all right, this is Metallica. Uh, and then we fused over oh, Lady Gaga. You songs? know, they, yeah, if yeah. they did something like that, Where I would they do a verse in. of each song and then kind of switch between the not, two? Not even that. Like, it's just, it could be anything. It could be the music and then the lyrics to the other song. Like, however they want to do it, I'm sure they're, they're very creative people. I think they could have pulled it off. Um, I, I would have been into it for sure. Like, if it was uh, any Lady Gaga song with Metallica backing, that that would be fucking great. Like, she's got good songs, so... I'm not here to fucking shit on her. She does, like, um, a lot of great uh, live music, like, where she just sits at the piano. Um, Like, she's got piano covers of all of her songs, and they're all great. Yeah. Yeah, she's a great performer. Like, I I mean, I will never say that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like her, her music, whatever, but she's got a great voice. Um, She's really talented, so. So She's Mama Monster. What did you guys think of everyone slobbering all over Beyonce's clit? What, Adele, because um, she attributed it. She's like, what does Beyonce have to do to win album of the year? Oh, and like Twitter blew up saying, oh, Beyonce was robbed. And Adele agreed with him. I mean, I don't I don't know necessarily because I didn't listen to Adele's album or a lot of Lemonade. I remember yeah, we, wa- I, we watched a bit of it, right? Just like the beginning yeah, of it. Yeah, we did. I, I that's, whole, that's really weird to me. If you are in the category up against, and you, you I, I'm assuming it's four other opponents, right? Like it's you and three other people. In those categories, like yeah. most, <laughs> so if if that's the case, and you you are you really Adele sitting in there in that crowd thinking to yourself like, shit, my album's not as good as Beyonce's. Like, do you really think that? Do you really think that you you put your heart and soul? Because I I'm assuming if you're an artist, you you feel and hopefully you feel this way that you put your heart and soul into every album that you put out. I think it's more that you're detached from uh, your own album in the sense that like you're so familiar with it. It didn't cause as much of an emotional, like now that it's so far out and you're, you're performing it on tour and everything. It's not so much an emotional thing for you as for Adele, when she was listening to lemonade, something in lemonade resonated with her where it was like, she felt that, Beyonce really. Uh, I, I disagree that. with you completely. I, I don't think that she felt that Beyonce deserved it at all. I think she, she, she felt did. that it was. Why would she go I, off I of it? Get, if she didn't believe that. Okay, uh, let me finish. I, I think that she said it because she knew that if she said it, she would get more of a pop. It, it's kind of like That's such a cynical point Air, of view. Okay, it's like Airbnb saying, "Hey, uh, we're going to support the refugees any way that we can, just to get the pop." It's Lyft coming out and doing I mean, their it, thing to get more of the pop. It, it's, no, because it's like, it doesn't I, it doesn't affect either one of them because like they both won Grammys that night. Either way, they were both walking away a winner, and this was just yeah. like the last Grammy. I but think it, there's Adele no reason for her to say more that. Talked about. I don't think she was thinking like, oh, that'll really get people talking about me. I think she just really liked the album, and she wanted I to don't acknowledge think that. that. She, 
I don't think that she liked the album more than she liked her own album. I don't think that she. Feels I don't think she said that, that she Beyonce's liked it more than her own better. album. She just said that she wished Beyonce, like she said, "I'm sharing this with Beyonce," and like she, she didn't say that. Uh, I hope. Yeah, that's an easy. It's an easy cop out. It's like, oh, hey, I'm gonna be best friends with this person. We both deserve it. Okay, cool. But you deserve it more. I don't know. I feel it. like it. It would have been, and I don't know if this is something you can do. I think it would have been a bigger impact if she was like, "I can't take this Grammy, and uh, you should just give this to Beyonce." Yeah, why didn't she? Yeah, if she feels like Beyonce does really deserved it, why didn't she say, "Hey, Beyonce, come up here. I'm giving this to you because this is yours." <laughs> you know why? Because she'd be fucking out of her mind to do that. Maybe they just don't let you do that. Maybe like she, it's literally like they they're gonna write Lady Gaga on it, and it's she's your gonna time. have to. She's gonna it's, have to get somebody to, to do whatever like, the fuck you want. What take is, a screwdriver and take the nameplate off. What is with like the goddess worship worship of Beyonce online though? It's like she's just a a musical artist. People are like they talk like she's changing she's the like world. A, she's just like a big artist. I don't know. There's yeah. like so many people that go into making her what she is. Well, yeah, I mean, she's. Uh, it's not necessarily. I don't know that people really believe that she's a goddess. It's just. Her pregnancy photo. You saw her pregnancy photo? The one where she announced yeah. that she was pregnant? It's you, like the most viewed photo on Instagram, which I think is so bizarre. Do you think she wanted to do a bikini photo shoot while she's pregnant? Or do you think like some... Didn't it look like pe- a terrible photo? Did you see it? Yeah, I saw them. It, didn't it look like she just like went to Sears and like they had like one of the, like a flower yeah. thing that she just sat under? Like Target with like a laser background? Yeah. <laughs> like it was just, it's like an awful photo to begin with. But I'm like, there's no way she wanted these pictures taken. Some PR guys, like it would be... Like feminism is in right now, it'll you'll get a huge boost in sales if you take these pregnancy pictures. She's not selling anything right now. The lemonade came out like in last May or something. Dude, People still stupid. buy it. That is a dumb thing to say. That you're always selling yourself. Yeah, I'm. I'm saying like she's not. She doesn't have a product out unless she's touring. She's probably not since she's pregnant. There, there's always a product out. She has millions of products out. Yeah, doesn't she have like other like? a clothing line or something and but everything everything the music the clothing the mag whatever the makeup like there's always something out there to sell i don't think you, i don't know i think you guys are just being a little cynical about it well no being shit cynical. because people are being way over the top with the worship of weird it. <laughs> what i yeah, it is strange. like she was it sent down from heaven yeah i, I mean I don't yeah get she's that. a great singer don't, they don't call her I, queen I, bay for nothing adam I don't understand, you know, the Adele. Like, it's just it's just silly. It's all really silly. Do you think Stur- uh, Adele wouldn't have given up that, you know, award? She's She was really happy to get it. She knew that she earned it. And that's just the way it is. Yeah, I think Adele is just just as talented a singer as Beyonce is. They're both fantastic. To, to be fair, like, Adele's album, I, I know that Hello Song was really big. Um, I don't know any other song off of that. I couldn't tell you one fucking song off of Lemonade. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Lemonade. Okay. That song where she walks around and she's got I the bat. Tell you, I could, and she says, I Becky tell you with the, the good title hair. of the fucking album. I, I, I don't know one fucking dick thing about that album. Do you think Sturgill Simpson was pissed that he didn't win? Who's Sturgill Simpson? <laughs> one of the other. Didn't he win? He was one of the nominees for Album of the Year. I don't even oh, know who that he? is. Is he a country singer? Uh, yeah, he is. The nominees were like Beyonce, Adele, Drake, Justin Bieber, and Sturgill Simpson. Bieber was in there? Yeah, he was nominated. Well, I mean, you knew it would be <sighs> Beyonce or, or Adele. I mean, Beyonce, like when she dropped Lemonade, like it came out of nowhere. Uh, and it sold, it like, broke. it came out of nowhere and it stayed nowhere. Like, that's the thing. No, is no, it, no, it I sold remember the so ancient- much money. Okay, it sold so much. I money. mean, so uh, she sold so many albums, have, made a ton of money. It, it might have done well, but it's just like I, I I don't know a single off of that record. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. A, it a, was weird because she dropped a, it out of nowhere, like on iTunes, chorus. and then like uh, HBO. Just like I remember, it showed the music video to Lemonade for like yeah. twenty four hours, and then they took it off. And I was like, why? Why does this come up and then just disappear? Like people are just gonna watch it on YouTube. I don't know, it was yeah, I don't know. It was dumb. It was dumb. I actually want to listen to um, the Sturgill Simpson one now because I've never even heard of him, and it must be good if it was nominated for Album of the Year. I know that Ward from Girls, Guns, and Glory was saying that it was a really good record. 
so, I mean, I, I do respect his opinion. I check it out. Joe, if you liked it, you should have put a ring on it. What? Uh, single ladies? Yeah. Put a ring on what? All right. Well, I, you guys want to wrap this baby up? Yeah. Final thoughts? We'll go to Adam. Uh, so I bought Metallica tickets today. They are obscenely priced. They are expensive. Did you get Did you get one or a couple? Um, I th- I don't know. I don't know what. I think my wife did something, but I don't know what it was. So shouldn't you follow up with her find out before they go on sale tomorrow? Yeah, they go on sale at like ten a.m. Yeah. Well, you can get them now. The Live Nation presale code. Don't is... tell the code. Don't tell the code. <laughs> don't give <laughs> it away, <laughs> Adam. The three people in the chat well, will wa- know what the code is. I want to give an exclusive to our listeners. Fuck them. <laughs> um, I bought a ticket. Did you really? Mm-hmm. I was going to ask Matt if you wanted to, to to me to get him one, but then he said he thought Rochelle got him one. So, well, did you get two? No, I bought one because you said R- Rochelle oh. got you tickets. Yeah, I will have to find out what she did. Did you get a seat or did you get? No, I got I, GA. GA, yeah, yeah. That's I plan I to work my way up to the front. I hope I don't have to pee. Well, if it's if it's anything like the Guns and Roses, there's like GA and then there's like VIP GA. Well, the is... I got like GA section four, uh, which I yeah. Don't... Then you so then if you have a section, that's probably there's like the VIP GA, which is. You know the real that's more pricey than whatever you got, and then the other one is the seats that we had, like at Guns yeah. and Roses, like at Guns and Roses behind the pit. Yeah, I remember like you, there were uh, sectioned off uh, rows um, near the front. I'll be mad if that yeah. happens. No, that's probably what you're looking at. Like if yeah. you have a section, chances are that if you have a section and a seat, then there's going to be seating behind the actual pit. That's not how it was the last time they were at Gillette, which was. Admittedly, 2003, but... Metallica or Guns N' Roses? Metallica. Oh. What did they do in 2003? It was this GA. Like, I worked my way Oh, the, the whole floor was, was just Yeah, open? the whole field was GA. And then the seats were in the stands, but... Yeah, I'll be pretty mad if I can't get up to the front. I mean, it's... Seen them out. Uh, the GA seats were, including fees, 183. Did you have to have them mail you a ticket? I couldn't find an option for, like, don't mail me anything. And they charge me three bucks to mail me a ticket. The default option is like, <laughs> yeah, the default is like they'll overnight you the tickets. And I'm like, it's yeah. fucking May. I'm not paying yeah. 20 bucks. It's like 18 bucks for them to overnight you the ticket. But there's no option for like, I'll just print them at home. And so I had to pay $3 to have them mail me a yeah. ticket. No, I didn't have that option either. I had to have it mailed to me too. Um, Adam, if you were crowd surfing and you got up close and then James Hetfield like pulled his dick out and he was jerking off and he was about to ejaculate would you try to catch it in your mouth I I'd probably have to why wouldn't you just yeah, get like, I mean, a this... cup and then save it and then you know get a surrogate and then have his baby I'd catch it in my mouth and but I just hold it in my mouth like I wouldn't swallow the whole night till I get home and I could put it into like a container <laughs> and like keep it in a safe yeah it was just like we'd catch up with Adam after the show. He's like, <laughs> I think the saliva would break down the spur. You're like, what are you saying, Adam? Adam, what are you saying? <laughs> what? Can't talk. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> That'd be really cool. I like that. Well, maybe uh, Adam and I will see you there. <laughs> or I have a feeling tomorrow afternoon you'll be like, well, I'm not going to the concert. No tickets were bought. Maybe we can tailgate. No, I'm going to that concert. Oh, if you got yeah, if you guys want to tailgate at that concert, I'm totally down for some tailgate action. It's a get Saturday, face. right? Friday night. Friday night? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't care about the band playing before them. Don't give a fuck. Just care about Metallica. I I've seen the price, but they're when my do, favorite. So when do we get our free album? Out. Free album? Yeah. When do we get it? I'll probably give you a download code or something. I don't. It's not like I really need it because it's on Spotify, but or I could torrent. Joe, it. final thoughts, sir. Um, I used the flashlight the other day the way you're supposed to. I actually warmed it up. It was nice. That was my review. Did you clean it? I did clean it. I cooked it on the stove. Uh, 
because I was reading what what do people how do people warm this thing up? And uh, a lot of them were like, you just <laughs> boil some water on the stove. And uh, so I was like, all right. So I did that. And then I let it sit in there for like five or ten minutes. And I take it out. And it it's warm. Yeah, it's nice. It's warm. It's just, uh, it was really hot uh, at, at first, like scorching. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, it cools down fast, though. So then I had to stop and then like reheat it like several times. <laughs> So I don't know if there's a better solution to it, but how long did it several take you? Times? Yeah, it took several a couple times. It took a couple times. Even... I had to reheat it in the microwave or in the no in the water? in the boiling water. <laughs> so if you just want to like edge for a while, you're constantly getting uh, up, and like unless you, I, I guess unless you keep the boiling pan near you uh, or the boiling pot of water like near you, I had to keep getting up and like going over and like. Reboiling it, <laughs> rewarming uh, it back up. It, the friction didn't keep it warm. Uh, not enough. Uh, it, it cooled down rather quickly. Uh, maybe it's just because I didn't boil it long enough. I got impatient after a while. I was like, oh, "This is dumb. I have to keep like I, I would leave it in there for five minutes or ten minutes, and then I would take it back out, and then it after five or ten minutes, it would be cooler again." Um, but like when it was still hot, it was really nice. So did you come? Yeah. So that it was nice. I cleaned it out. Did you taste it? I didn't taste it. Um, I did read that buying an electric blanket and cooking it for two hours was the way to go. <laughs> but I don't... Are you, like, surfing flashlight tip No, I, I went to one, and there was, like, it was a forum, and there was a bunch of posts, and that was, like, one of them was, like, use an electric blanket and just wrap it up for two hours, and it stays toasty for a long time. Um, but I don't have an electric blanket, and I'd have to go buy one. I think they're, like, 100 bucks. So. Did you use it because you wanted to, or did you just want to be able to tell Matt you used it? No, I used it because I wanted to. Because um, at that point, I hadn't really rubbed one out for like a week. Uh, it was right after my vacation. So did you rub one out on vacation? No, oh. I, I, I did insane. it. I did it Tuesday morning. Were you when you rubbed one out finally? Were you thinking about Shannon running by in that towel? <laughs> 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 no, uh, I mean yes. it's not, there wasn't really an opportunity to do it uh, on vacation. Um, just because like there uh, wasn't an opportunity. Well, I mean, I he had my own room. Going to American bars and watching The Voice. Yeah, I'm saying like there room, wasn't there wasn't time to jerk off. Yeah, there wasn't really an opportunity. I could do it in my room, but like we just didn't get a lot of sleep. Um, because we'd go to the bars and we'd stay out till like one or two a.m. and then we'd have to be up at seven, um, to be ready for the next tour. So like we just didn't get a lot of sleep. Uh, I will say that the tub there, because um, you sit in a wooden tub, like a, one of those Nordic tubs, to take a shower, because it's got like a, a hose that you can shower yourself down in. It was so nice because you're sitting inside the tub where you just use the shower head and you spray under your balls. It felt so great that I <laughs> wish I had that at home. <laughs> so that was your second best memory. That was the second best memory, yeah. Matt, final thought? Um, my final thought for I've been playing The Witcher three, uh, really enjoying that. On what? Xbox. Oh really? Yeah, I did pre-order uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. The and what? I pre-ordered Wildlands. Horizon Zero. On, what is that? That's a game on PS4. Yo, you got all those, both of those on PS4. I did. The Witcher three was a lot of fun. I didn't finish the story at all but it was fun while i played it yeah i'm playing that right now i'm really looking forward to wildlands i think that's going to be uh, a fun game i'm hoping that my friends will purchase it as well because then i can have uh people to play with there's no multiplayer at launch yeah there is no adam well, read it to it there's co-op multiplayer oh but not like uh no death match oh. that's coming in later uh, I'm fine with no deathmatch. I'm fine with the co-op uh, missions, though. I don't know. I was, I was burned by the division, and I I did think about playing the division recently, um, to check it out because you'd mentioned uh, it might be a little bit better. But I'm anxious. I am anxious to give the money when the game first comes out. Like it might be better to do it later. Yeah, I I don't know. It looked fun. I've been watching people play it on. Uh, I'll probably on make up my mind um, when. Uh, 
the open beta comes out because if they did it like the division it came out like a week before the game came out i tried out the for honor open beta over the weekend and the the four v four matches were pretty fun but i didn't see a lot to the game so i decided not to buy it yeah 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 that's kind of seemed like what it was just not that fun um, all right. Well, guys, we're the Lotus Cast. LotusCast.com is where you can listen to us live every Thursday night, 9 to 11, 10.30 now? Uh, well, it's 10.45. Please be sure that you check out Youth in Revolt. This is their uh, song. Youth in Revolt is on tour now. And uh, hope you enjoy them. This is their uh, song, The Broken. Yeah. Check them out. Go see them in the next what? Find their album if you want to. Follow them on Twitter at you can both. Really do appreciate them coming on the show. If you uh, if you enjoyed them, uh, you know maybe say hey, Youth and Revolt. Really like you on the podcast. Yeah. How's your company? You can do that on Saturday when they're in Worcester. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess until next week. Did you say something? I didn't hear the end. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. 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 Let's